With less than a year to go until the ADSB mandate will be in effect in the United States, it's a good time to review some of the questions pilots and aircraft owners have on the topic. Here are answers to some of the most frequently asked questions about ADSB. Do I have to install ADSB to fly in the US in 2020? No, in most airspace you won't need ADSB out. You do need it everywhere a traditional transponder is required today, which is in Class Charlie airspace, Class Bravo airspace, anywhere above Class Bravo and Charlie airspace, within 30 miles of the nation's largest airports, as well as anywhere in the country above 10,000 feet MSL, excluding the airspace at and below 2,500 feet above the surface. That leaves a lot of airspace available below 10,000 feet where you can still fly legally without having ADS-B out. Is air traffic control going to change how they work on January 1st, 2020? Not really. There will be a few subtle changes. For example, ATC will be able to see you in some places, like close to the ground, where traditional radar coverage doesn't pick you up as a target. And your aircraft position on the radar screen will be updated more frequently, allowing ATC to vector you a little more accurately. But there's not a list of all new procedures and new ways of managing traffic waiting for January 1st, 2020. My altitude encoder broke, but that's okay because ADS-B transmits GPS altitude, right? <coughs> Wrong. Altitude assignments and vertical separation are based on pressure altitude today, not geometric altitude, which is what GPS is reporting. And that won't change in 2020. So your altitude encoder still needs to work. Can I still get VFR flight following or file IFR flight plans in 2020 without ADS-B out? Absolutely. As long as you remain in airspace where ADS-B out is not required, you can still get VFR flight following just like before. Or file and fly IFR. I'm renting a plane that doesn't have ADS-B. Can I make it ADS-B compliant with a portable ADS-B unit? No, I'm afraid you're not allowed to do that. There are companies offering such solutions, but, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, these portable devices are not approved by the FAA for use in aircraft, including experimental aircraft. I don't have ADS-B out. Can I still make an occasional flight to an airport in Class Bravo or Class Charlie airspace? Just like you can ask ATC today for permission to enter airspace which requires a transponder if you don't have one, in 2020, you will be able to ask ATC for permission to enter airspace requiring ADS-B if the airplane is not equipped. They could turn you down, but it doesn't hurt to ask. And if they do allow you in, you're perfectly legal, without having ADS-B. I have ADS-B in, which shows nearby traffic. Should I pull the old active traffic system out of my panel? No, by all means, if you're fortunate enough to have an active traffic system, leave it in place. There are situations where, by design, ADS-B will not show all nearby traffic. Plus, I've seen many cases where ADS-B should have shown me a nearby target, but didn't. An active traffic system, which directly interrogates mode C transponders of nearby aircraft without relying on ground equipment of any kind, will help you fill the gaps of the ADS-B traffic picture. With ADS-B replacing traditional transponders, do I still need a 24-month transponder test? Yes, you do. Your ADS-B out transmits either on 1090 MHz, in which case it is a fancy transponder, or on the UAT frequency, in which case you still have a traditional transponder in your panel in addition to ADS-B out. Either way, that transponder lives by the same rules for inspections as before. Can I fly if ADS-B is installed on my aircraft but broken? Yes, you can. However, the regulations have a subtle but maybe important difference talking about the required use of transponders and the required use of ADS-B out. The language of Part 91.215c says that if your transponder is operable, meaning in good working order and maintained and inspected as required, then you must turn it on when you fly. Compare that with Part 91.225f which states the requirement to turn on ADS-B any time when flying an aircraft equipped with ADS-B. It doesn't say you can leave it off if it's not operable or not maintained. Therefore, if you have ADS-B in your aircraft and it's broken, according to this language, get permission from ATC before you take off. Some people believe this is just poor wording, 
and an oversight when the language for the new ADSB regulations was created. It's possible we'll see this wording be changed in the future, but for now, this is what it is. I decided I won't get ADSB for my airplane. Is it a good idea to remove my Mode C transponder? Wait a second, why would anyone pull a perfectly good transponder from the panel? If you think about it, there are cases where that could be a serious consideration. Starting in 2020, if you don't have ADS-B, you are not allowed to fly in any airspace that requires a transponder. So why pay for the transponder inspections every 24 months if that transponder doesn't buy you access to airspace? Or, a more extreme scenario, if your existing transponder breaks, why would you pay to have it repaired or replaced if you can fly all the same by just removing the broken box instead of spending money on fixing it? Tempting as that may sound, removing the old transponder would be a short-sighted move. Even in airspace where ADS-B and transponders are not required, air traffic control still provides separation services for you and other nearby aircraft, and it is much easier for them to do that if you do have at least a Mode C transponder. The same goes for TCAS and active traffic equipment in other airplanes around you. Those also rely on your Mode C transponder. Therefore, even after 2020, the old Mode C transponders still contribute greatly to everybody's safety and to avoiding mid-air collisions. I heard people talk about anonymous mode. Is that important? Opinions differ on this topic. Yes, there is something called anonymous mode on UAT products, which makes your flight unidentifiable as long as you squawk the VFR squawk code 1200. Some people are concerned that sometime in the future, there may be a charge for using the airspace in the United States. User fees of some sort. Others argue that user fees are already a reality in many other countries, and they don't rely on ADS-B at all. Time will tell who is right, but personally, I don't worry about this. Does it matter if I get a UAT or a 1090 transponder? If you're flying in the US, then probably not. Either one will make you compliant, and with the ADS-B ground infrastructure, either one will make you visible to all ADS-B in installations. Now, if you plan to fly outside the US, that's a different story, because no other country has plans to implement UAT. AOPA has a nice overview on their website of what other countries are doing for ADS-B. You can see here that Mexico is introducing similar requirements as the US, and while Canada doesn't have a mandate yet, NAV Canada has a study going on which could lead to one. To future-proof your ADS-B installation for flying outside the US, or with the resale value of the aircraft and potential foreign buyers in mind, 1090 may be the better choice in the long run. And the lucky number 13. I have ADS-B out, but I often don't see other nearby airplanes through TIS-B. What could be the reason? That actually happens pretty often with airplanes which have ADS-B out installed, but they rely on a portable ADS-B in receiver and an iPad to display other traffic. If you notice that nearby airplanes are systematically not displayed on your iPad, have your avionics technician check the settings of your panel mount ADS-B out device. One of the configuration settings is your ability to receive ADS-B in and ground stations will only send you data about nearby traffic if they know you can actually receive and process ADS-B in. If you have other questions about ADS-B that I haven't answered here, write them down below here in the comments section of YouTube. As always, I appreciate a like or a subscription if you enjoyed this video.